Hey there, let's sit down and talk about some of my pens. This is one of those videos where I chat about some of my personal pens. There is no writing sample. Each of these pens has been reviewed separately. That means that you can look at those reviews if you want more information about any of the pens or want to see a writing sample because I'm not going to write with them right now. The purpose of these videos is to talk a little bit about the background of these pens. Okay, so today I thought what we would do is talk about the big ones. I have three pens that are particularly large that are all Arushi pens, special pens, and that I really like. And I'm going to talk about them. So the first one is this one. Demetrio Mikado. All right. And when I say large pens, I do mean these are actually large pens. All three have the same filling system, one-way shuttle valve that means you unscrew the section, take it off, fill the pen with an eyedropper, and then when you want to write with your pen, you unscrew this bit at the end that opens up the valve in there and the flow gets richer or a bit poorer and makes the pen drier or actually wetter or drier. So, the Mikado. How did this happen? The Mikado is, you can get it in a bunch of finishes. Uh, this is Aka Tamanuri, which is one of my favorite Urushi finishes. Beautiful, sort of warm, reddish brown uh, that, that I really love. What happened was, Eric, you may remember Eric from the good old days of Fountain Pen Geeks, or you may remember him from the pen pal parties, the videos that Aziza and I have recorded with him when we sit down and we chat about pens. Eric visited us in Oshawa in Canada and he sold off a whole bunch of his pens. And this is a pen that I knew he had, that I'd been eyeing for quite a while, uh, and that I ended up buying from him. Now, the special thing about this is that Eric and I have been friends for a number of years. Um, that really goes back quite a way. I'm, pretty sure that was 2012 uh, that, that we got to know each other and in 2012 I also went to the DC Pen Super Show with him. So we became friends over the years, very good friends, and he was selling this pen, I really liked it. I like a larger pen, I didn't have any Denitrios, I thought it would be fun. So I ended up buying it, Aziza hates it because in her mind it's too bulbous. I completely understand that. I find it a superbly comfortable pen. Number eight nib, Bok nib, and I have to tell you, the Nitrio may have the best nib imprints that are ever made because they are so incredibly cool. It works really, really nicely. So you have that, you have an ebonite feed. Now, the one thing about this pen that I didn't like so much was that it was a very, very, very dry writer. So what do you do in that case? You send it to the Osenze. Mike Masayama, the nibmeister, and he sorted this out. And I will say, this nib is stellar now. Nice and wet without being overly wet and super smooth. Master Masayama knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to tuning nibs, tuning pens. Big ebonite feed makes for superb flow. So that is really, really nice. And I absolutely love this pen. It's by no means small, it's big, it has a fat section, and it's incredibly nice to use. Doesn't post, you don't need to post it because it's more than adequate to use. Unposted. The nice thing about having purchased this pen from a friend is that every time I use this, I think of our friendship, right? And that's something that makes Fountain Pen special. Because it was Eric's pen, something to remember him by. He's in the US, I'm in Canada, we're far away, but again, when I use this pen, it's kind of like talking to him. So if I write a letter with this or anything, it's like he's in the room. And that's just special. And this is one of those things, again, that makes fountain pen special in my mind. Now let's talk about the next pen. Uh, the next pen, chronologically speaking, was the first Urushi pen of these three that I bought, okay? The Namiki Emperor. This is a massive pen. This is one of the bigger ones, uh, biggest pens that I own. Uh, the the like the cap alone is almost the size of a Lamy Safari. So there is that issue. Massive pen. What's the backstory to this? The last 
Tilburg Pen Show I attended, 2017, September, and then I moved to Canada. I was just thinking, did I get the year right? 2017, yes, I think so. Been a while now. Very interesting pen. And this pen was on the table of Sarge, who is one of the most dangerous men in the pen business. Sarge doesn't have a shop. Sarge is a vendor at pen shows. That's not his profession. It's what he does, though. And Sarge is a dangerous man because he will show you things that are just beautiful and then you want them. And there's no resisting. This is one of those pens, and as you can see, it has a massive nib, which Namiki calls number 50. It's huge, way bigger than number 6, way bigger than number 8. Massive nib. I saw it on the table of Sarge. This is the old-style nib, because Namiki now has different nibs. This is the old-style nib, which personally I think is a little nicer than the new-style nibs, but that's personal. I saw this pen on his table, and I, I really, really loved it. Massive pen, again, one-way shutoff valve, holds a massive amount of ink, has a plastic feed, not, not ebonite, which is then also covered in urushi. Um, you can see a tiny bit of air bubbling there, which can happen because of the liquid, but I really haven't had any issues with this flaking off or anything. And it is a superb writer. Broad nib that a previous owner has stubbed or has had stubbed, and it works really, really, really nicely. This is not a pen for the faint of heart. It is massive. Uh, because it's a Rushi, I wouldn't necessarily post it, but if you want to post it, it is huge. And I love it. Now, the special thing is two things. One, it was a gift from Aziza, which makes it special, because that means it's a gift from your spouse, and that always makes something special. And the second thing is my last Tilburg show, a show I attended from 2011 onwards every year, the one Dutch pen show, the last time we attended it, and then we moved to Canada. So this is also a keepsake from that era, right? It's a thing like, you know, remember the time we went to the Tilburg show and we went there for the last time and we saw our friends and we saw familiar vendors and the familiar venue and Tilburg, the, the town, which is in a way kind of cute. Um, and then this is my keepsake. So that makes it extra special on two fronts, that it was a gift and that it's a, a memory of that final show. And I love it. It is superbly comfortable, the nib is massive, the ink capacity is massive, the whole pen is massive, but it works. And most people I hand this to to try out say, you know what, that's actually really comfortable. I thought it wouldn't be because it's so big, but that section is made in such a way that it's perfect. Very, very comfy and an absolute pleasure to use. And as I said, Sarge is a very, very dangerous man. Speaking of very, very dangerous men, there's another one called Bryant Greer. Bryant, the owner of Chatterley Luxuries. Uh, at some point I started to chat with him a bit online and I said, you have a Denitrio Genkai. How big is that in relationship to, say, an emperor? He sent me a picture, he said it's about that size, and it is. Now, the Nitrio Genkai is another one that is no small feat in many, many ways. Big pen, and another very nice one. Also Rushi covered, also again, one-way shutoff valve, also massive ink capacity. Very simple design. No clip, nothing, just the pen, barrel, body, has everything. Cap comes off, section is large, number 8 nib, and again, Denitrio has superb nib imprints. So I really, really like that. 18K nib, broad. Was given a small tune-up by Salmon of the Toronto Pen Company, and now it writes beautifully. I found it a little skippy when I got it, you see. Good nib, number 8 nib, ebonite feed. Works really well, keeps up really well with the ink flow, and again, a massive pen. This is not post, nor do you need to post it, because it's huge. Lovely pen. This one is special. It was, I believe, the first pen I bought in Canada. So, I, I mean, Bryant is in the US, but I ordered it from him from Canada. So the first pen I bought when I got here. And it's lovely. I love it. Now, 
uh, these pens don't fit in pretty much any normal pen pouch, so I had this commissioned, that's review two, custom pouch by Van der Speck, uh, Dutch company. Uh, very, very nice, holds these pens easily, but that's what you need because these pens don't fit anything else. And that's it. My three Rushi pens, they're all big, they're all massive, they all write beautifully, and they're superb. They're just big. So it's not necessarily something you want to carry around in a, in a breast pocket of your uh, shirt because they're going to stick out really far. If you do this, you knock yourself in the face. So you cannot do that, but they're wonderful. And they mean a lot to me for very different reasons. One, purchased from a good friend. One, a gift from my wife. And one, because it was the first pen I bought in Canada. And that makes them all special. So there you have it. Three more pens discussed by me, either three or three for my European friends. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.